Welcome to the coolest stuff on the planet. Well, hey there. Good to see you all. Nice, nice to have you here at the podcast. I'm Rachel, and um, over there is what's your name, young lady? It's Catherine, and I'm sitting across from you, and happy to be here again. Awesome. So Catherine and I are going to. Uh, we usually look at cool places, but today we're kind of going to look at. Something that really is just cool stuff. Because this is a particular form of architecture that is both awesome and ancient. And that would be the yurt. Yurts really developed originally in Central Asia. And they're particularly associated with Mongolia. But it's this round um, kind of tent-like dwelling that has traveled all over the world. You'll just find them everywhere. You know, I always wondered why the yurts were actually round. And what I found out was it's because this shape allows you to have the greatest uh, space possible internally for the least amount of materials used. And the other thing is because there are no corners, then you have the fewest services exposed to the wind. And Mongolia is a windy place, so this would obviously have been something that would have been very important to them. All right, makes sense. The actual dwelling uh, spread along with Genghis Khan's empire in the 13th century AD. So a couple centuries later, quite a few, in the 1960s, yurts really took hold in the West, particularly in um, North America and the United States. There are various developments on the East Coast and the West Coast, but one that you might have seen fairly often is they started popping up in state parks. So if you've ever stayed at a state park anywhere in the U.S., um, chances are good that you might have found some yurts available as camping options. And you know, there's so many options for them. They, they're, you can have fabric yurts, there's frame panel yurts, um, there's yurts, as you said, for camping. Some people have added a yurt as an office or even a, a spa because they're so portable, you can use them for anything. So yurts have this really impressive structure um, in spite of the fact that they're so simple looking. So they're, they're built to withstand extreme temperatures, high winds, and they do it really well. They have this lattice framework, which typically, traditionally, is made of wood. They have uh, ceiling beams and these tension cords, which basically work together in a form of compression to make them really good at withstanding the weight of snow mm. or just any sort of pressure, like winds, All right. so that they pull in on themselves to stay strong against this kind of pressure. And whether it's hot or cold outside, the temperature is pretty ambient, you'd say, inside your yurt, right? Well, yeah, they're able to, they're able to alter the temperature by um, adding more fabric to the outside or taking some off. One thing I thought was interesting is that, you know, the western half of the yurt is considered the male area. That would be where the man would sit and where he'd store his gun and his hunting gear and this kind of thing. And meanwhile, the eastern half is the female area. And so that's where she sits with her pots and her pans, her, her looms. And that's also the area where the children would sit. So they have this division inside the yurt. And I think that has to do with yin and yang principles, mm. like the feminine side and the masculine side. A lot of yurt structure, in fact, has a lot to do with their beliefs about the universe and about the dynamics of relationships. So it's, it's actually very interesting. In Central Asia, you're more likely to find that the yurt is placed on a, a piece of felt on a grassy place, um, but that's because that area is uh, pretty dry. Meanwhile, in the U.S., because we have more rain and snow, they're more likely, as you said, to place it on a platform because that way that will keep out the elements from uh, getting inside the yurt. I think my favorite thing about yurts is if you look at any pictures of them, you'll see uh, often beautifully decorated, especially the doors. And I kind of wondered why that was, so I, yeah. did, I did some digging, and it turns out that the doors and the frames are status symbols. Mm. So even if you know your tent is fairly simple, you have this beautiful, elaborate door, which is painted and decorated, and it, I guess it's really kind of the showpiece of the yurt. So that would be something that would probably have some kind of meaning to other people when they saw the, the carvings on there or the, or the colors that were used. Yeah, I would think so. Yeah. Well, that's beautiful. Yeah, I love the pictures that I saw of those traditional yurts with those doors. Well, that's all we've got time for on uh, the coolest stuff on the planet. If you'd like to learn more about yurts and yurt-related stuff, you could check out our site, How Stuff Works. You might want to look at the article, How Yurts Work, on HowStuffWorks.com. And um, I guess we'll see you next time for more cool stuff on the planet. For more on this and thousands of other topics, visit HowStuffWorks.com. And let us know what you think. Email travelpodcast at HowStuffWorks.com. Don't forget to check out our other podcasts free on iTunes.